Well, we're still here at Huntington Beach. Back there where that other post is. You can see where we did the first episode. Huntington Beach back behind me. And as you look over here, you can see just a beautiful, gorgeous beach that goes on for miles down that way. And then, of course, down here, you can see the surfers. And this is really known as Surf City USA, and for a good reason, because it's got the best waves. If we watch, we will see these guys getting up on their waves as the waves come in, and they try to run the waves, keep on top, on the top of the wave, all the way into the beach. I am not a expert on surfing. That's not my area of expertise, so that's about as much as I'm gonna tell you, and because I'm gonna go back to what I am uh, a, an expert on, that is this book here, the Quran. And this is why we're going through this series, looking at the internal critique of the Quran. And we're asking this question on whether or not this book is relevant for the 21st century, whether it's relevant for here at Huntington Beach or anywhere else in the world, whether it's relevant for you or me or for anybody else, or whether it's relevant for today or any other day. And my conclusion is absolutely not. And the example that I'm talking about concerns how Muhammad the example of Islam, remember we looked at those five verses that refer to the fact that he is the best example. We looked at the verses uh, that refer to, let me just repeat them again, that's chapter uh, 33 verse 21 that he is the best example, chapter 68 verse 4 that he has the best, uh, highest character. Uh, we looked at uh, that chapter 53 verse 3 that said that he does not speak of his own desires and then we looked at chapter 4 verse 80 and also chapter 47 verse 33 that because he's the best example because he doesn't speak out of his own desires we are then to obey him we meaning everybody is to obey him now I want to look at what he did to uh, three of his wives well actually two wives and a concubine because these show me that this is not a good example let's start with Rehana. Rehana was a Jew. She was a wife of one of the men of the Banu Quraiza. Remember the Banu Quraiza had lived in Medina. They were natives to Medina. Muhammad was not a native to Medina. He was from Mecca. He had only been in Medina for five years when he attacked the Banu Quraiza family and destroyed them and took all in this case, it says 750, some uh, say as much as 800 of the men, all the men that existed, and slit their throats in one afternoon, took the women as concubines and the children as slaves. And this is one of them, the Jewish name, Raihana bin Zaid ibn Amir. According to Guillaume uh, in Ibn Isak, written, uh, that refers, and also uh, uh, chapter 466, and also Al-Tabri, who is the one that compiled the Tafsir, volume 9, pages 137 and also 141. And Al-Tabri, later on in volume 39, pages 164 to 165, talks about Rayhana bint Zaid uh, ibn Amir. And remember, refers to the fact that when he destroyed all the men of the Banu Quraiza and saw this beautiful woman, he wanted her as a wife, she refused to convert to Islam because of what... Muhammad had done to her family and so he became a concubine he would not allow her to be a wife because of her refusal to accept Islam is that relevant for today do you think that that should be something that we should do should we follow that as our model absolutely not I want to go to Juwairiyah bint al-Harith Juwairiyah bint Harith was a very beautiful woman she was also another Jew she was taken as booty and she tried to buy her freedom, but because of the fact that she was so beautiful, Muhammad noticed it and so wanted her as his wife. And his other wife, Aisha, remember Aisha is the one that, that we talked about earlier. She was only seven when he married her, nine when he consummated that. His favorite wife, she got jealous of the fact that he saw that this woman is beautiful. Guillaume talks, uh, uh, refers to that in his translation of Ibn Isak. And he says and he mentions that according to Ibn Aun, and this is what he says, that the Prophet had suddenly attacked the Bani Mustalik without warning while they were heedless and their cattle were being watered at the places of water. The men were killed and the women and children were taken as captive. The Prophet got Juwairiyah on that day. So he takes this woman who he has attacked, killed all the men, uh, attacked them without any, uh, with, uh, by surprise, and they were not aware that they were going to be attacked. And then he takes this beautiful woman as his wife. Is that relevant for today? My answer, of course, is absolutely not. 
And then the third one is Safia, probably the more famous of these three. Safia was uh, the 17-year-old uh, wife of Kinana, who was the chief at Chaybar. Chaybar was further north in Medina, that's where a lot of the Jews lived, and he was the chief, Kinana, and he was tortured, uh, but tied to a stake and was burned with fire so that he would reveal where his wealth was. Now, his wife, his 17-year-old wife, Safiya bint Huyai, was taken by Muhammad before he took her as his wife. Muhammad killed her father, her brother, her first husband, her three uncles, and several cousins. Basically, he just decimated her families, the males in her family, and then he takes her for a wife. Is that relevant for today? Would we do that to women today? Any woman who is watching this, would you see that as relevant for today, for you, or for me, or for anybody, for anywhere? Muhammad consummated the wedding before Idda. He, before Idda. That goes against what the Quran says in chapter 2, verse 235, and also chapter 65, verse 1 and verse 4. So Muhammad is actually going against his own revelation. Is that relevant for today? Absolutely not. Can any prophet go against his own revelation? But the story about Sivaya is found by Sahih Muslim in chapter 8, volume 8, 3325. Dia asked the messenger for Safiya when the prophet chose her for himself. The apostle traded for her by giving Dia her two cousins. So he chose, he gave two women so that Dia would uh, uh, give him this wife because she was beautiful. And the women of Khaybar were distri distributed among the Muslims. That's in Al-Tabari, volume 8, hadith number 117. All of this I'm taking straight out of the traditions. These are Muslim traditions. These are your traditions if you're a Muslim. And these are the stories of your prophet. In these three cases, two wives and a concubine, if this is the example of Muhammad, and that's what he did back there in the seventh century, should we be doing that today? Please say no. There's nobody that I know that would accept that. But what you can then accept, and the person you can accept is Jesus Christ. See, when you look at Jesus Christ, you ask, did he do anything like this? Are there anything that you can think of that would sully his character? And for 40 years I've asked people, is there anything that we can find wrong with Jesus Christ? Everybody loves Jesus for one very good reason. What's there not to love about Jesus? Muslims come up to me and they say, we love Jesus, why don't you love Muhammad? And I say, exactly, of course you love Jesus. Who cannot help but love Jesus? Because we don't have stories like this about Jesus. Thank God he is as relevant today as the day he was living 2,000 years ago. But when you look at Muhammad and you ask the same question, just looking at these three women and seeing that he is the greatest example that we're to obey him, I don't want to obey that. I want nothing of that kind of example. Not today, not to any day. Not for me, not for anyone, not for here, not for anywhere. And that's why we must be careful who we choose as our model. Come on home to Jesus Christ. What a model today. What a model for every day. What a model for you. What a model for me. That's the man I give you. Much better than Muhammad in every way. God bless you. Here in Huntington Beach, servers are still looking for that great one last way before they head on in. Some of them have found smaller ones. This is not the best day for surfing, but nonetheless, it's great for us who have to talk about what we want to uh, refer to, of course, relevancy. It's such a great day as it is. I love Huntington Beach. Wouldn't it be love to be able to stay here? The man that's holding the film right now, the man that's actually here, this is his area. This is where he's from. Can you imagine being able to come down here at any time, at any day, and have this kind of view and this kind of weather? Okay, this is Jay. Love to talk with you. We'll be doing some more of these. We'll be continuing on with some more examples of whether or not Muhammad is relevant for today, whether or not the book, this book, is relevant for today. I think you're starting to get the answer. Absolutely. Good. This is Jay.